Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's your favorite history teacher back at you again with another historical video. And today, um, let's fix that. Okay, probably did nothing. Anyway, today uh, we got chapter 31, people. We are so close to the end, so close to the end. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's hop into it. Uh, starting a new unit. A new unit, new period, period nine, um, and that is 1980 to the present. So some of this stuff is going to be brand spanking new unless you've studied American history on your own in, in regards to from 1980 to present day, present day politics. But as you have if you've looked in the back of the book you'll notice that it kind of ends with obama's presidency so uh, i don't think trump is mentioned in chapter 32 but um we will see okay so this is titled from the age of limits from the 70s to the age of reagan chapter 31 let's get into it so politics and diplomacy after Watergate. After Nixon's resignation, Gerald Ford became the next president. He had to rebuild the American confidence and trust in the American people. Only a month after in office, Ford pardoned Nixon. And we saw a lot of pardons happen in Trump's final hours. So a person who is pardoned cannot be further punished for their forgiven offense and should not be penalized for having a record of that offense. It's like it didn't even happen. Um, and so even though Nixon was a dead man walking, um, Ford pardoned him. Was it right? Was it wrong? The world may never know. It's all in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, Ford, however, was not successful in reviving the economy. There would be a huge recession in 74 and 75, which was only exacerbated, made worse, by the energy crisis. OPEC, hey, remember we I offered you extra credit the other day? OPEC, the oil producing, exporting, the organization, organization of petroleum exporting countries, a.k.a. a cartel, uh, had an oil embargo on the United States in 1973, and the price of oil rose by 400% alone. Ooh, me. Um, in 1974, and inflation rose 11% in 1976. Ford retained uh, Henry Kissinger. And there are the SALT II agreements, the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. This was the second round of agreements signed by Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev. Um, I can't see this because my thing's in the way. So he, uh, Ford faced strong opposition in the RNC for re-election, Republican National Committee. And uh, especially by Ronald Reagan, however, Ford will win the nomination. Democrats uh, will nominate little known former George, former governor of Georgia, Jimmy Carter, Carter, President Carter, President Carter. Uh, he was elected president 1976, uh, pretty close um, electoral college vote, 297 to 240. So he, Squeaked out the win. Bro. Okay, so there's Gerald Ford. Ford gives pardon. Uh, these blue countries are OPEC. Um, this is 2016. But basically, a majority of OPEC is in the Middle East. And that's President Carter. Uh, continuing on, uh, Carter campaigned as an outsider representing Americans' suspiciousness of entrenched bureaucracies and complacent 
public officials. However, his critics will knock him for not having a real direction for government. Congress will pass virtually nothing of his ambitious legislation. Carter will call for Americans to voluntarily restrain themselves from consumerism um, and consumption amidst the recession. And um, I don't know if that's the right way to tell. I mean, everyone deals with change in their own way. Some people are very stuck in their ways. And from the big booming consumer consumption society that stemmed from the 50s and 60s into limitations in the 70s and 80s, or yeah, limitations in the 70s, it's not going to work. Um, so by 1980, interest rates rose to the highest levels in history, exceeding 20%. Um, and then Carter will give his famous malaise speech, blaming the American people for his inability to deal with the nation's problems. Just sounds like a lot of hocus pocus BS. However, um, the work Jimmy Carter did in regards to human rights um, worldwide is more or less what he's known for. He was a crap president, him and Ford. Um, and, you know, the stuff that he did worldwide and giving others um, an outlet for, for human rights and civil rights, it's mainly what he's known for. So uh, uh, the ownership of the Panama Canal during his presidency was given back to Panama. Uh, he negotiated the Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty at Camp David, known as the Camp David Accords. And he finalized the SALT II agreements with Brezhnev. However, that would be met with criticism almost immediately from conservatives. So again, here is uh, the Panama Canal, a map of it. Um, here are the Egyptian and Israeli uh, leaders because there's, you know, brief unrest during this time. And here's Malay's Jimmy Carter. Okay, politics, more, 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 more. All right, so since the 1950s, this is kind of stemming from the Cold War too. I hope you know the Cold War is still going on during this time. So since the 1950s, the U.S. had always supported the Shah of Iran by 1979, however, Iranians resented his rule and the Shah abdicated to the U.S. And um, he was also treated for cancer um, here, being, you know, a pro-American -Ameri politician. Uh, he's going to receive probably preferential treatment here. And the Iranian people did not like that. They chose Ayatollah Ruallah Khomeini, sorry if I butchered that, um, as their next leader, and he was a zealous religious leader. Uh, November 4th, 1979, the armed militants broke into the American embassy in Tehran, um, and they took the diplomats and officials hostage and demanded the Shah return to Iran for their freedom. And the 53 Americans remained hostages in the embassy for over a year. It's called the, I think it's called the Iranian hostage crisis. Um, and likewise in 1979, the Soviets invaded Afghanistan and it's the US version of the Vietnam, your books calls it a quagmire, giggity. Uh, not that kind of quagmire though. Um, just it's it's the soviet version of vietnam soviets didn't need to go there soviets did soviets failed carter sanctioned the soviet union and canceled american participation in the 1980 summer olympics that were going to be held in moscow and he also pulled out the salt two agreements think of that as you know the what is it the the paris peace accords how trump pulled us out of the paris peace accords but biden 
got us back in um because you know climate change is real um the combination of domestic economic troubles and international crises created widespread anxiety, widespread frustration, widespread anger that damaged Carter's low standing with the public. This aided to the strength to an alternative political force that had been making some political strides in the Republican Party. So here you have the, I think this is Khomeini. And here are some hostages. And this is Brezhnev stomping into um, Afghanistan. As you can see, it's almost like the hammer in the sickle. Um, and the, you have Muslim rebels as uh, the political cartoon. So the rise of the new American right, aka conservatism. Uh, it, before we get there, there was the rise of the Sun Belt. Remember that we, we looked at that briefly um, in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, it produced change in the political cli climate. Populist traditions in the South and West were capable of producing progressive politics. More often in the late 20th century, this region had developed a strong resentment of the growth of government and the proliferation of re regulations and restrictions that liberals produced and it affected the West more than any other region. And you have what's called the Sagebrush Rebellion. Be familiar with that. Um, so suburban conservatism leads to a revival of religion during the 1970s, almost as powerful as the Second Great Awakening in the uh, 19th century. You have the rise of cults, the Church of Scientology, the Unification Church of the Reverend Sung Mung Mew, Moon, Sung Myung Moon. And then you also have the People's Temple led by Jim Jones. Uh, and there was also another growth of evangelical Christianity, these born again Christians, fearing the growth of feminism, the threat posed. Uh, to the traditional family, um, gay rights, abortion, they were not about that. The new right was a diverse but powerful coalition of think tanks, consult consulting firms, lobbyists, and foundations that grew during the 1970s. And the origins stem from uh, Barry Goldwater's 1964 election loss, where people thought they needed to be more conservative. And Ronald Reagan, your former California governor, emerged as the new conservative hero. He was a former actor, spokesperson for GE. He made a memorable speech on behalf of Goldwater. He seized leadership of the conservative wing. 1966, he was elected governor after strong support from wealthy conservatives in California. There's going to be a tax revolt uh, in California that's going to lead to the rise of conservatism out here. And it was in part led from the opposition to Prop 13, uh, which was a referendum rolling back property taxes. The right separated the issue of taxes from the issue of what taxes supported. And that's going to erode the government's ability to expand and launch new programs. So gaining all this experience as governor, the election in 1980, Reagan promised the, to spread the tax revolt by making substantial tax cuts for wealthier Americans. He is going to win in a large landslide, 489 votes to 49. And on inauguration day, the 444-day hostage crisis ended with uh, Reagan's election and the hostages in the uh, U.S. Embassy in Tehran were released. So this is the Sun Belt. Here's Scientology. This is Jim Jones and his uh, people uh, following his cult. They drank the Kool-Aid. Um, this was, was it, it was somewhere in South America that's where his cult was. 
Um, and the people drank the Kool-Aid and they died. This is Ronald Reagan, if you've never seen that face before. So you have the Reagan Revolution. The Reagan Coalition included a group of wealthy Americans associated with corp the corporate and financial world. The com uh, these guys were all about the commitment to capitalism and unfettered uh, economic growth. The market offered the best solutions to the most problems. And there is a deep hostility to most government interference in markets. So he's a laissez-faire type of guy, hands off. You have the group of neoconservatives. If you know that Greek uh, root word, neo means new. And they were sympathetic to demands of the capitalists. Their principal concern was to reaffirm Western democratic anti-communist values and commitments worldwide. There's the uh, I, this distrust of the Eastern establishment, AKA Soviet Union. Populist conservatives expressed opposition to centralized power and influence. There was a fear of living in a world where distant hostile forces were controlling society and threatening individual freedom and community autonomy. Oh, just all this bad. <laughs> Uh, even those that opposed him were drawn to his attractive and carefully honed public image because he knew he was an actor. He knew how to publicly pu speak in public, uh, unlike your teacher. <laughs> All right. So one thing you do need to know is this idea of supply side economics or aptly named Reaganomics where he would try to reduce taxes in order to encourage new investments. The goal, obviously, at this time, is to reduce the national budget. It's what presidents have, uh, the previous presidents uh, are trying to do. And um, if you don't know what the national budget deficit is in America, ask Siri. Uh, he wanted uh, deregulation and reduction of the role of government, so finally get rid of the Great Society get rid of these New Deal programs still in existence because those, as we've learned, cost a lot of money. Go to war in Vietnam, pay for great society programs. People were tired of giving out, giving these free handouts from the federal government. However, in 1982, uh, the United States was sunk into a deep recession, but there was a quick recovery. So these are your four, um, four pillars of Reaganomics. Reduce federal income and capital gains taxes, reduce federal spending, reduce government regulation, um, and tighten the money supply and reduce to reduce inflation. Don't really know if that's going to work, people. Because the economic revival did little at first to reduce the federal budget deficit or to slow the growth of the national debt. And Reagan had recorded record budget deficits and accumulated more debt in his eight years in office than the American government had accumulated in its entire history. We there is this idea that he was a great president because he was able to, you know, finally, I mean, he wasn't even president when, <laughs> when the Soviet Union disbanded, but he gets a lot of credit for turning America back around uh, because people thought that these protests, these riots that are happening, the stemming from the civil rights movement from the 60s and into the 70s and then you got all this uh you know environmental protection agency and you know limiting what people can do but you can't do that because like we're a consumer con country that's our history we consume 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 so reagan steps in and is like i'm not going to limit you guys you guys can do what you want um and 
There you go. He spent more money that we didn't have in all the years, in his eight years, and uh, all the money we had, all the debt we had accumulated up until his election. And one of those was his strategic defense initiative, a.k.a. Star Wars. Yes, he was a Star Wars fan. Um, or he took it from the movies. Four, five, and six came out during, during what was it? 1973 was the first one, 1972, 1974, I don't know. So he thought through lasers and satellites, he could provide an an effective shield against incoming missiles, making nuclear war obsolete. So you throw these satellites that have laser technology that could pinpoint any nuclear threat. So any nuclear missile launched from the Soviet Union, they could be shot out from the sky. And the uh, Reagan administration supported opponents of communism anywhere in the world, whether they had any direct connection to the Soviet Union. So that's known as the Reagan doctrine. It wouldn't be aptly, it wouldn't be a president in the late 20th century if he hadn't had a doctrine named after him. So in 1982, he sent troops to oust anti-American Marxist regime on the island of Granada in the Caribbean. 1979, the pro-American dictatorship in Nicaragua fell to the revolutionary Sandinistas who became anti-American and increasingly Marxist. And they had support. Uh, He gave, Reagan gave support to the Contras to take down the Sandinistas. 1982, Israeli forces invaded Lebanon to drive out guerrillas. Guerrillas of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, from the country. American, excuse me. Oh no, American soldiers were sent to Beirut to oversee the peacekeeping mission and remain to oversee the fragile government. Uh, They became targets of terrorism in the 1983 terrorist attack where 241 Marines died and Reagan withdraws uh, the troops from Lebanon. 1984, he decisively won. He won every state except Minnesota and DC. He campaigned that the claim of the uh, remarkable revival of American fortunes and spirits were because of his leadership. Whew. Think about that. Who does that sound like? Hmm? Uh, his campaign slogans were, it's morning in America, and America is back. So here you have his Star Wars uh, plan. Here is who increased the debt. Just look at it. Um, the red are Republican presidents. The, B, the blue are um, Democrat presidents. Here you have... Uh, Nicaragua, there's Granada, such a small country that there was a threat of communism in such a small island nation. Here you have Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, and Marines are now out of Beirut. Okay, America in the waning of the Cold War. There was the collapse of the Soviet empire. The most visible factor was Mikhail Gorbachev who came into power in 1985. He had two policies, uh, hopefully you remember from last year, glasnost or openness, which was the dismantlement of many of the repressive mechanisms that have been conspicuous features of Soviet, the Soviet life for half a century. Speaking openly, uh, criticizing the government, you can now have like that freedom of speech. And then you have Perestroika, um, which is reform. And it was an effort to restructure the rigid and unproductive Soviet economy by introducing elements of capitalism, private ownership, and profit motives. So no longer hardline hardline communism. um, And uh, Stalin is just churning in his grave. Even... even, uh, I mean, Lenin, Lenin might be, okay, I can see this because, you know, Lenin did the same thing. So from as early as 1987 to 1989, every communist state in Europe, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, East Germany, Yugoslavia, and Albania overthrew their governments. You have in 
Tiananmen Square in 1989, students called for greater democratization. It was a bloody result that not much is known about. Hmm. 1990, you have apartheid laws were retreating, the legalization of its chief black party, the African National Congress, ANC, and Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years in South Africa. Over the next several years in South Africa, they repealed its apartheid laws. And in 1994, they elected Mandela as their first black president of the country. End of August, 1991, um, Gorbachev resigned because he was unable to stop the fragmentation and dissolution of the Soviet Union. And then the Iran-Contra affair where Reagan uh, and the White House conceded that they sold weapons to the revolutionary government in Iran as part of the largely unsuccessful attempt to release several American hostages. This is known as the Iran-Contra affair, AKA American hostages being held by radical Islamic groups in the Middle East and in Iran. And the money from the arms deal with Iran was uh, much, not most, I'd say, yeah. Most of the money was covertly and illegally funneled into a fund to aid the Contras in Nicaragua because Nicaragua was looking like they were gonna go communist. We couldn't have that. So the money we made from the sales was then put into a secret fund to pay and send um, aid to the Contras, which mm, this would be a stain on Reagan's presidency, that Iran-Contra affair. Here's Miguel Gorbachev. Here's Nelson Mandela. Here's that famous picture from Tiananmen Square where students stand in front of these uh, moving tanks. Um, here you have an apartheid sign. And then here is money, guns sold to Iraq, at Iran, my bad. And then from the Middle East, the profits are sent to the Contras. I believe it was like $12 million, but $7 million went to the Contras, something like that. Here's the Soviet Union and 1991. So all these countries on, along the edge are free as you see in this little picture, the former Soviet Union, all in pink, and all these different colors are new countries. All right, last slide. Former Vice President and Republican George H.W. Bush, elected in 1988, even though Democrats held a majority of both houses of Congress. So that's very odd that he still won. Uh, he proved to be less successful in domestic issues. There was an early recession in 1990, 1991, and 1992 because of the enormous level of debt corporations had accumulated in the 80s, led to a lot of bankruptcies. With the fall of the Soviet Union, America is the only superpower and would not fight communism worldwide, but more of a defense of regional and economic interests. So in 1989, uh, we invaded Panama and overthrew their dictator, Manuel Noriega, in 1990. Saddam Hussein and Iraq armed forces invaded oil-rich neighbor Kuwait with plans to annex. Bush persuaded every Arab and Islamic state to join a UN-sanctioned trade embargo of Iraq. At the same time, the U.S. and its allies, Britain, France, and Egyptians, and the Saudis deployed forces on the border between Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. The UN voted to use military action to get rid of Iraqi forces. Um, I can't see this word, this thing needs to go away. I can't see it. Um, in Kuwait, if they didn't retreat by January 15th, 1991, January 16th, the very next day, began a mass massive air bombardment and invasion of Iraq on the ground. It was met with little resistance, 100,000 over 100,000 Iraqi deaths would occur in the six weeks of this Persian Gulf War. And after uh, the six weeks, a ceasefire was uh, agreed to and the brief Persian Gulf War was over. And in 1992, Bill Clinton was elected president. So here's Bush Sr., Saddam Hussein, 
Manuel Noriega. You have the Persian Gulf War invasion right here. There's Kuwait. Here's Iraq. And that's Bill Clinton. All right. So, yeah, a little, a little bit long of notes, a lot of notes for this area. But, you know, it's just new information that you got to know. It's just new information you have to know. So um, not much of the test will include information from here, but you might see things from the Reagan doctrine. You might see things about Reaganomics. Um, the various, the rise of conservatism. You might see some, is it, is it, you might see something from a Goldwater speech, um, just politics and all that. So hopefully that was helpful. If it was, hit that like button for you, boy. Uh, we got one more chapter, people. So we're almost done. As always, stay safe, wash your hands. Peace.